I'm Mitch Madalin, and I would like to say I'm excited about reading this book to you, but I'm not. The author of this book and I have something in common. We have dyslexia. I didn't love school because reading was so hard for me. College wasn't for me either, but right now I'm going to school for computer programming. I'm learning how to code. I hope you guys enjoy this book and you enjoy March Book Madness. Today I'm reading A Walk in the Words by Hudson Talbot. Drawing always came natural to me. I drew all the time. I just did it, like breathing. Every day after playing with my friends, I'd come home and draw stories that I made up. It was like diving into my own world. I liked words too, one at a time. When I was reading, I had it picture every single word. But long sentences, no way. I would start reading a long sentence and then my mind would start to wander. I was the slowest reader in my class. When everybody was turning the page, I was still reading the first sentence. Nobody knew, but the books knew and they were coming for me. So many words, so many pages. Books weren't always scary. The first ones were friendly with big pictures and only a few words. But little by little, the pictures got smaller and the texts got longer. It was a reign of terror. My drawing pad was my safe place. A whole page of text looked like a wall, keeping me out. By now, everyone in my class was reading books, book after book, except me. What if they found out that I couldn't keep up? I had to face it. I was alone and lost in a world of words. Everywhere I looked, there were big words, strange words, scary words. One big word that stalked, stalking me um, was overwhelm. I described the feeling of too many words coming at me at one time. It made me want to give up, but I loved stories too much to quit. I was good at practicing or picturing stuff. Maybe I could try picturing a way out. I grabbed overwhelm and broke off over. So it just said whelm. It meant the same thing was more my size. Now I could whelm the words before they overwhelmed me. I'd just read at my own pace. After all, it was my walk in the words. I took my time for walk for words that I knew. There, there they were, like stepping stones leading me onward. I jumped over the words I didn't know, and I let words I knew lead me into the story. After a while, I wasn't thinking about reading. I just wanted to know what happened next. The war between my fear of reading and my curiosity was over. Curiosity won. Books weren't so scary once I got to know them, and now that I was beginning to like words, why rush past them? I realized that just because I was slow at reading didn't mean that I had to fear it. I also learned that many great people were slow readers. I honored them all in my Slow Readers Hall of Fame, and I tore down that terrible wall of shame. Slow readers savor the story. I experimented with ways of telling my story. I could still tell a story with pictures or I could tell it with words. My favorite was using both. I remember how my horses got better the more I drew them. My writing could improve too if I wrote every day. I drew, or a drawing could show what a horse looked like, but the words I could bring them to life. Now they could breathe and snore and carry me on an adventure. I read every day. I search for new words for my stories. I was like finding a new color for my art, but I was learning to paint with words. 
There were still times when I felt lost in a sea of words. My drawing pad was still my safe place. Others found music, sports, math, and science. Words had always scared me, but once I felt free to read at my own speed, they became my friend. I could unlock the magic of stories and even become a storyteller myself, turning that sea of words into an ocean of possibilities. All I have to do is enjoy the ride. Now there's some author notes at the back that I would like to read as well. Long ago when I was learning to read, there was no such word as dyslexia in common use or even a pleasant phrase like reluctant reader. I was just slow. I still feel a twinge from the scars left by those early memories of Shane that came from um, the pressure of reading faster than my normal pace. It occurred to, in my beginning of reading group, I was still sounding out words while the others first graders were reading silently. The other kids snickered uh, the message sank in. I was a bad reader. Words were not my friend. I hope that my story will help you heal who, or will help those who bear similar scars to mine, will empower young readers who are on their own journey to literacy. I hope you guys enjoyed the book, and I hope you enjoyed March Book Madness.